Hey guys, I'm gonna um, run through the first part of it, just the, the surface subdivision, which is where you definitely should be by now. Um, so if you used um, extrude or something like that to create your surface, it sometimes is a little finicky about selecting that surface as a surface. So um, you have two options. You can use geometry here, which is kind of like a generic, it'll accept any kind of geometry and then Grasshopper can pick it up from there. Or if it's a surface or solid, you can use um, BREP. So BREP uh, is going to be subdivided using divide domain squared. So um, go to math, go to domain, divide domain squared. And remember when you're using that, you also have to go to surface utility and ISO trim. And ISO trim is gonna create that little triangle connection where you plug the surface into subdivide surface. You plug the domain into the domain of surface. You're gonna create a subdivision on this surface using these divide settings, and then you will create your slider. So, um, wow, how'd they get bigger without me even doing anything? That was weird. Um, create your subdivisions. And then in order to find the center point of that subdivision, you use area, okay? So that's how you find the center points. Um, and then the next step is to find the surface normal. So I'm gonna pause this video while you guys are continuing to work through this. And then as I get through each stage, um, it'll just be one quick video. All right, so next up, um, you guys are gonna need to, um, at this stage, you should have your cylinders mapped and you're just kind of working on like finding the normal or possibly even already moved on to the point of like trying to define how far you're extruding. But um, the good thing is in order to map these cylinders to this form, um, the surface normal um, kind of is used for both, right? Um, so let's go to um, analysis and I've already got area in there. So I'm gonna pull um, evaluate surface and I'm gonna pull surface closest point. These two, um, pretty much are always gonna go hand in hand, at least in this class. Um, so we've got the um, surface itself, or list of surfaces. Um, so I'm gonna plug that into the S input, or the surface input of both of these tools. And then we've got our center points, which is this. So what that's doing is it's actually mapping these frames on each and every one of those points to be perpendicular to where that point is on that surface, okay? Um, so what's cool about that is it gives us our normals that we're gonna use to extrude along, but it also gives us a frame for us to use to map the base point frame um, and plane of the cylinder. So I'm gonna plug F into B and you'll see that, well, okay, so I flipped, but um, that, that now they're all extruding perpendicular to my surface, okay? So now you've got your normals, you've got the cylinders that are mapped, all you have to do is change how far it's extruding. All right, so that's the next step. Yep, amplitude's part of it. So um, we're gonna jump into the solution here for the final extrusion part. So um, I guess it's not actually extruding because the cylinder has a length feature, right? So that's asking you for the cylinder height, which is essentially the same thing as extruding a circle. And all it's asking you for is simply the magnitude of how high this extrusion is supposed to go. So when you um, are testing with your attractor point, you just have to remap numbers and plug it into L, and that's going to give you the extrusion. So um, let's do uh, an attractor point for this. So I'm going to um, go to params. I'll drop in a point. I'm gonna go here and drop in a point somewhere down here, like over there, um, and I will set that point. Um, remember that what you're testing for is um, how far that point is from each of the center points of the cylinders. So I'm gonna to go to um, uh, vector, I always forget where this one is when I try, oh there it is, vector point we're gonna do closest point. 
and it's going to ask for the point to search from, which is the list of all of my center points. And then it's going to ask me for the cloud of points to search, and that's my point value. So I get a value or a list of distances for how far they are. Um, and then I need to remap that. So what's going to happen is if I just plug those distances in, it's going to look like this. Right? It's not wrong, um, but I just don't have any control over it. I can't change what the distance uh, of the uh, extrusion or the height of these things is. So um, in that little area between the uh, D and the L, I'm going to remap those numbers. So let's go to remap. It's going to ask me for the values to remap. It's going to ask me for the source domain. Uh, and then it's going to ask me for the target domain. The source domain is what is the domain of the list that was generated. And then the target domain is, is what do you want it to be squeezed down into. So um, these are the values. We're going to create a domain um, using uh, bounds. Plug that into S for the source. And then we're also going to create a numerical domain using construct domain. So that's going to get plugged into T. So when I remap that over L, I can put in new values like 0 to 15. And if I start at 1 and I end at 15, this is what I get. Or if I wanted it to go uh, vertical, I can switch this to uh, negative. Let's go negative. Oh, that didn't go the other way. That's weird. Oh, because this is a 15, negative 15 and negative 1. That's super odd. Huh. All right, well, I'll figure that one out later. I don't know why it's only going that direction. But anyway, what questions do you have? Um, so we have to have a remap on there? Yes. So do you guys understand what's happening with remap? I know I just showed it to you like toward the end of class on Wednesday, but I can like explain it in more detail if it's helpful. Yeah. Okay, so um, remap is basically saying like if I have an attractor point right here, I'm measuring, and I'm only gonna show you three different points, but like I'm measuring the distance from here to here, here to here, and from here to here, right? All three of those lines have different distances, correct? Yes. So let's say that this one is uh, like a two feet away, this one is um, four feet away, and the other one is six feet away, right? That's how far they actually are away from that point. So what remap numbers is doing is it's taking this, which has a boundary or a domain of two to six. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so then when you remap it, you're defining a new boundary. So if I want my boundary to be from um, let's just say from one to three, um, one to three, it's going to change those numbers to be, instead of two, four, and six, it's going to be one, two, and three. Does that make sense? Because it's proportional. It's just taking that whole list and squeezing it down to a different boundary. If I wanted it to, if I wanted it to be from um, 10 to 30, then it would be 10, 20, and 30. What if the numbers that you 
doesn't matter. It's doing the same thing. If, if this is uh, 2.2 and this is like a 4.3 and that's like a 6.1, then these are just going to be decimals that are proportional to that. So a 2.2 uh, for like a 10 would be, uh, well, that would actually map to 10, whatever your lowest one is. So 2.2 would map to 10, 6.1 would map to 30, and then the middle one, 20, is like slightly higher than halfway between the two. So it would be like a, maybe a 21.45 or something like that. Okay. Cool. So... There you have it. There's uh, an extra explanation. Yes? I just wanted you to look at my answer. Oh, sure. Okay. Let me stop the video, and uh, we'll take a break, too.